The announcement came uh, just as much as a surprise, I'm sure, to any of us, any one of us here in this news conference as it did to many people worldwide. But it's nice to see the sense of jubilation and certainly the wonderful anticipation uh, all of a sudden is hitting home that we now have a new Holy Father to carry on the mission of Christ. He's going to be a wonderful, wonderful presence and taking the name of Francis really threw us off. To tell you the truth, I was expecting a call from the nuncio, not announcing the new Holy Father, but expecting that they named the new Bishop of El Paso. That never came. <laughs> but I'm very, very happy to say that this was very, very well received. Uh, we're very, very pleased to have with us the presence of our Jesuit contingent to my immediate right, uh, because our new Holy Father, certainly Pope Francis, is a Jesuit, not only in heart, but in mind and heart and in spirit. And so rumor is there was a bit of jubilation across the street while we were watching our television. And that was the jubilation taking place in the Jesuit residence to my immediate right. And we're very, very happy to have members of our Jesuit community who serve our diocese so very, very well. And I'm, I'm here to say that, like many of you, the name came out of the clear blue sky, uh, but very, very well received when we think that even in the United States, we have almost one third of our Catholics are of Hispanic origin. And so consequently, the receiving of a Latin American uh, cardinal who has now been named the Vicar of Christ certainly has set a shockwave worldwide, but especially in a time in history where the Hispanic presence worldwide is not only an area of prayerful concern, but an area of concern. What can we do more to welcome the stranger within us and certainly extend that hand of a bienvenido to everyone, all concerned. We realize we don't know too, too much about uh, the new Holy Father. He's an insider. He has been in Rome. And I think basically all I can say from an outsider looking in is that I think the College of Cardinals, guided by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, have seen the need possibly to take from within the household of the Vatican, someone who knows in one sense, no pun intended, but where the skeletons are buried and possibly bring a little more light into the accountability and certainly the transparency that at least we on the outside were hearing uh, might be called for at this particular time in the church's history. And so I, I'm very, very happy that certainly the waiting is over. And uh, I thought it was very interesting driving home a few minutes ago. Uh, they were giving a literal interpretation of the Italian. And I, I was so deeply moved because I saw him, one of the very first acts by breaking protocol as he was on that balcony, one of the very first acts was he asked in Italian for the blessing of the people of Rome. What a beautiful, beautiful way of saying, we're all in this together. May I receive your blessing and then I will impart on you my pontifical blessing. I think we're off to a wonderful start. What a hard act to follow. Secondly, uh, the, because my Italian can only be second to my worst Spanish, but the Italian came out that he's breaking tradition tomorrow and he's getting out of the city. Well, just across the city. And he's going to invoke the patronage of our Blessed Mother at St. Mary Major. She is the protectress, the patroness of the Roman people. 
And so I think politically, he hit the ground running and he hit a home run with the Italians because he's going to St. Mary Major, invoking the intercession of the Mother of God to protect the people of Rome. One of the titles, as many of you know, is he is the Bishop of Rome. And because of that, he certainly has been there long enough to understand where the needs are. Uh, I don't propose to have much more than you have on your, bio, your bios in front of you, but I, I'm just very happy to at least put to end any speculation that it might have been one of our Jesuits to my right, because I know that they might have been losing a little bit of sleep by this time. Remember, any man, any single man uh, worldwide who was not even ordained could have been a candidate for the papacy. So I think that's officially all that I have to say for any prepared statement that I might have.